guys, Mary Beth Temple here from Hooked for Life with Mary Beth Temple. And in this video, we're going to go through the sewing steps to make this cool little bag. Now this is made out of plastic mesh and it has a pocket on the front. And I was thinking about this project. I know that dorm rooms are a lot more exciting than they used to be, but back in the olden days, when I went to college or I went to camp, I had to carry my shampoo and my soap and my makeup and stuff to the ladies bathroom that I shared with some other people. And I thought this would be fun because the plastic means everything in there can air out. The sewing makes it look cute and you can put your phone right in there or if you have one of those giant ones and it doesn't quite fit um, your dorm key or your lanyard or whatever else you have to carry around so uh, we have it so it uh, does a drawstring thing at the top it's about 12 inches wide finished and about mm, 13 and a half 14 inches tall and we are going to take a look at all the steps you need to make this cute little bag for the person in your life that needs to carry their wet things around. It would also be cute for a swimsuit. Um, not a bath towel. I don't think a towel would fit in there, but it'd be very cute to put a suit in while you were at the pool coming or going. So, um, Let's get started with the video and while I'm getting myself organized, please take a moment to subscribe to the channel for more content weekly on knitting and crocheting and sewing and whatever else I can get my hot little hands on. And uh, let's get going with the project. So let's take a look at the materials real quickly. I'm going to be 100% honest with you. I basically went stash diving for this. I did not go out and purchase anything. So I have two uh, two and a quarter inch strips from a strip pack that I had. And I also had a coordinating charm pack uh, with a couple of pieces left over from another project. So I took one charm square that is the same color as what I'm going to use for my top binding. And then I picked two that were a coordinating color because I want to make the pocket reversible so it doesn't look messy on the inside of the mesh since you can see through it. Um, the mesh, again, it's left over from a project. I know that I bought it in a package. It was not by the yard. It was one of those, you know, grab a package of it. So this is a black plastic mesh. And then I had a couple of yards of this cord laying around and I'm going to use that for, it's kind of nice for a drawstring cord, but it'll do. And it was here because I was very fond of stash diving. So let's take a look at the cut list. I'm going to have my little bits and bobs bag finish at about 12 inches square. So I cut a piece with the fold at the bottom so that it is 13 inches wide. So I can have a half inch seam allowance on each side and folded. It's also 13 inches. That makes it a little bit taller, but I wanted to uh, cover up that sort of selvage edge up there. So again, all together, the piece, the, the mesh piece is 13 inches wide by 26 inches long. We're going to fold it up. So the folds at the bottom, I took one of the charm squares, the pattern one, and I cut it in half and I wanted to make sure that the, um, print is oriented this way because I want it to mirror the strip that is going to be at the top. So I wanted to make sure that my little, uh, print here was all facing in the same direction. And then out of those two strips, I cut four 13 inch strips. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to assemble the pocket and then uh, nail that down. So all I'm going to do now on both sides is take the uh, solid color charm square and put that wrong sides together with the half charm square. And I'm going to sew across here with a half inch seam allowance. Then I'm going to press those open, put right sides together and sew around the outside edge with a half inch seam allowance, leaving an opening at the bottom so I can turn the work. Pardon me. <laughs> so I can uh, turn the work and uh, bag the pocket out. So I have pressed my seams open. Like I said, I was going to, I have pinned them together, right sides facing each other. I'm going to start here. I'm going to use a half inch seam allowance, go all the way around the outside. 
And I'm going to end right about here. I want to leave an opening at the bottom just a couple of inches wide so that I can turn the whole thing inside out and have a reversible pocket. Now before I turn this right side out, I want to trim across the corners. I want to get pretty close, but I want to make very sure that I do not cut into the thread that I sewed with. And this makes the corners lay much more neatly. So I'm going to do that on all four corners. Now I'm going to turn it right side out, but when I do that, I'm going to physically go to each corner. This is a trick I learned in my costumer days. I'm going to put one, push one side away from me and the other side towards me and then turn it right side out. You know how sometimes you get those lumpy bumpies in the corner? This makes that really nice and flat. Now, if it happened that I had one of those lumpy bumpies, I could use a pencil point or a knitting needle or something like that to get rid of it, but setting it up this way makes it really simple to have a nice corner. So one side away from you, one side towards you, turn. One side away from you, one side towards you, turn. one side away from you, one side towards you, turn. Now I'm going to press this flat. I'm going to press up the seam allowances on the bottom so it's nice and straight. I'm going to make sure those corners are straight. And I'm going to top stitch right along the edge just of the top because I will get a, a seam when I top stitch this into place but I don't want this to be floppy, so I'm going to top stitch right across the top. So the first thing I'm going to do now is sort of eyeball up where I want the pocket to be. It could be down near the bottom or up near the top, but I want that to be able to gather up when I use the drawstring. So I'm going to put it a little more close to the bottom than the top. And you can see I still have my opening right there, but don't worry about that. I'm going to uh, cover that up when I do the top stitching. Now that I have an idea visually where I want it to be, now I can get the tape measure out and make sure it's in about the same amount from both sides. That looks like it's got to go that way a little bit. Um, you can tell I'm not going crazy. One of the fun things about doing projects and not quilting is there is a, uh, it's not quite as fussy. <laughs> you don't have to be accurate to within a hundredth of an inch because at the end of the day, as long as it doesn't look crooked, you're all good. So I'm going to pin this into place and I'm going to make sure that I'm only pinning through one layer because I'm only sewing on a one layer. And then I'm going to start here and I'm going to top stitch down across the bottom, closing that opening and up the other side. And I'm going to make sure to back stitch at the beginning of the end because that's going to be an area that has a lot of wear, but then my pocket will be open at the top. So I'm going to pin this into place and top stitch it on three sides. Okay, there's the pocket all top stitched on. And if somebody's looking at it from the other side of the mesh, if you're carrying the mesh bag around empty before you put your stuff in it, looks nice on both sides and there's no raw edges. So let's talk about assembly and putting that binding on the top. Next thing we're going to do is take each pair of strips, pin them right side together and sew them across one side, one long side, with a half inch seam allowance. We're going to do that twice. Okay, I have pressed the seam allowance to one side, and then I pressed in a half inch on each of the short sides. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to top stitch about three eighths of an inch in from the edge, but not the whole length. I'm going to leave three quarters of an inch on either side. The reason I'm putting that top stitching here 
is to make sure that I don't get tangled up when I am uh, putting the drawstring in uh, because where the drawstring goes in and out, of course, there's going to be a little wear. So I'm just putting a little top stitch in on each of the folded sides, three quarters of an inch in at the beginning and end. All right, we're getting there. We're almost done. The next thing I have done is pinned the right side of the assembled top binding to the wrong side of the bag. And I'm going to sew them together with a half inch seam allowance. And I'm going to open up as much of that uh, edge fold as I can get. It doesn't have to be perfect and it'll fold back in when I do my side seam. So I'm going to sew right along here and I'm going to do that also on the other side. All right, I have folded my mesh in half with the right sides facing each other. So you can see my pocket is on the inside and I want to make sure that I've lined up at the top. I want to make sure that these binding pieces are exactly opposite each other. I can always fudge a little bit on the sides if I have to. Um, but I want to sew both sides. Now I have switched my thread from the top stitching thread to black and I have also put a small zigzag. So uh, not very long and not very wide, but I think a zigzag is going to catch more of these threads than a straight stitch would. You also have to be careful when you're doing this that you don't pull too hard because it will bow out because it's plastic. It's not fabric. It's not going to snap back. So make sure you're guiding it through the machine in such a way that it does not uh, stretch out all over the place. And I'm going right up to the tippy top, right by where the fabric is. Okay, I have pressed the uh, binding in half at the top seam. And now I'm turning up the seam allowance and pinning the fabric on the right side of the bag into place so that it encloses all that uh, all that mess going on right there. So we're folding up the seam allowance. Now you want to really take your time doing this and make sure that the uh, folds are exactly opposite each other because you don't want to miss when you're top stitching. When you top stitch along here, you want to make sure that you're catching the underside. I will also say this, for somebody like me who all says iron everything, be really careful that your iron tip does not hit the actual mesh because it's plastic and it will melt and it will ruin both your project and possibly your iron. So go ahead and pin that into place and then when you get to the corners you want to fold the seam allowance this way and uh, get all that mesh enclosed up in there so that it is neat on the edges and then go ahead and top stitch both sides of that and then the last thing we have to do oh I'm sorry I didn't say I turned it right side out first. So now I'm looking at the right side of the work when I do my top stitching because I want my top stitching to look nice on the right side. If it's a little messy on the wrong side, I'm not going to be as excited. So go ahead, pin that into place and top stitch that down and then we'll take a look at it when it's done. So the very, very last thing you have to do is put the drawstrings in. Now I used two yards of the drawstring cord, so I cut it in half. I stranded one going this way coming out the other side and tying a knot on this side. And then I did the opposite. One stranded this way, coming around, coming out this side and knotted this way. So then when I have my goodies in there, all I have to do is pull both sides and I'm all ready to roll. So thank you so much for joining me here on Hooked for Life with Mary Beth Temple. I hope you had a wonderful time. Please bop on over to the blog or follow me on social media or subscribe to the channel for more content just as often as I am able in knitting and crocheting and sewing and crafting and whatever I get my little hot hands on. And I look forward to seeing you again real soon. Thanks so much, guys. Bye-bye.